Hey everybody, so what's happening? Um, today I'm just gonna build a deck in real time and um, kind of just showing you kind of my thought process for a particular deck and um, some of the changes I think that, you know, kind of make the, you really wanna showcase a deck, right? When you're playing Commander um, and kind of optimize it to a degree and um, be competitive, that's kind of uh, I think kind of the end game for the for the for the um, the game and um, you know it's fine to have an end game and I think that um, you know it kind of has a feels bad when you maybe put time into a deck and maybe um, you miss a particular card and it ends up costing you like a very close game and you're like well how the heck did I lose that game you know so it can come down to like just a couple of different card selections, and I'll kind of go over this deck to kind of demonstrate um, perhaps like some of my thought processes for, you know, where, where I want to go with this deck, where I think that it kind of can go to and where to start, like kind of where to start with it. So um, this is a landfall deck. I would say that this is intended to be a landfall deck. Um, it is based on Bro Coast, Apex Forever, and I kind of brought these two out just to see them on camera to see which one kind of looked better. And I really think this one pops, actually. I, I really love his artwork, you know? I really love the um, Roko's artwork, just that. It's just so classic, man. But I do think, like, this is just gonna inspire, like, the fear into my opponents. So I think I'll go with this one. This one's pretty cool. So, yeah, that is the, ex the extended version from the Ikoria set. Um, if you're unfamiliar, the, uh, this commander, what's um, really nice about this particular commander is that it can um, mutate from the command zone and from the graveyard. So if it ever gets removed, like can destroy effects, um, even exile effects, you can pop this. Well, and in terms of exile, you would have to pop it back into your uh, command zone. But if it is destroyed, you could um, put it in your graveyard and continue to mutate for that class of six, which is really nice. It's really nice just to have kind of mutate on the stick and you can just be mutating um, at will, really, from the command zone, which is really nice, or the graveyard, it's just fantastic. Just a great ability, so I really love Brokos. So, to get to the landfall, um, there is some things that kind of we have to be cognizant of, and it's it's basically where, where we're getting, okay? So, what I have noticed from this deck, and I was kind of shying away from it at first, was the extra turns. Um, and kind of looking at it again, I do think kind of um, turns could probably potentially be kind of important to this deck. Uh, you know, time warp could be could be sufficient in itself. Um, it just really depends on like how far you want to go um, in terms of like the time walks. Um, I definitely think it is kind of important to have that um, built in. Um, to the deck um, in some capacity. Um, in terms of um, kind of your error with it, like milling it out, like your one time walk would kind of feel bad. Um, getting it milled perhaps would kind of be, um, you know, we do have some ways to recur. You know, th for instance, we will with the uh, Galabed recovery and stuff like that. Um, it just depends on like, um, you know, your comfort level and uh, how many you think you need. So for this particular deck, I do think like a, a time warp would be um, kind of sufficient. I think one time warp would be good. So I'm definitely going to be just kind of starting with that. So let's just go ahead and start. This is a very old time warp. You can see uh, it went through like a laundry machine. It's from M13. So this is one of my older cards. Uh, so. This, this is definitely sort of like our basis, right? So to build a Sultai Ultimatum deck, um, you know, you're gonna, ha you're gonna wanna have some, you're gonna want three three hits to the components of the the deck, um, those, those particular hits. You want um, probably a time walk of some sort. You want, um, and then two other very powerful spells. So powerful that basically the opponent would um, rather not, you have the time walk and would rather have those instead. And, and neither choice is very good. So um, in terms of this deck, 
What I'm thinking for is there is a new um, commander card that is coming out that's pretty pretty awesome. It's the uh, the last march of the ends. So I feel like that could be like kind of a top end. Um, this is kind of like where I'm seeing our top end at the moment for the Sultai Ultimatum kind of package is just something like this. Yeah, I think something like this would be um, pretty sufficient. Like, Time, Walk, Time Warp on itself is just a, a decent card, like a, an extra turn for five, especially um, with our Landfall deck. It's just gonna be really good. Um, it's just really good value. So I think this is kind of our package here. And um, the, the basically what, what these cards uh, provide is, um, this is from the uh, March Machine Breach the Multiverse. This is a really cool card. So this is an each player kind of card. So it's kind of disgusting. So that each player mills 10 cards and then for each player choose a creature or a Planeswalker card in that player's graveyard. Put those cards into the battlefield under your control. So very powerful. Then each creature you control becomes a Phyrexia in addition to its other types. And this one is the um, one with the multiverse. Isn't it so interesting that these two have like the, you know, multiverse into their um, kind of foils, huh? In that manner. One with the multiverse, they're just bombs, you know, just bombs, cards. Huge casting cost, but just so powerful. So for one with the multiverse, you may look at the top card of your library anytime, so reality chip. You may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. So yeah, so first of all, it's just a lot of, uh, a reality, a reality chip, so which is crazy for us because we're a landfall deck. And then once during each of your turns, you may cast a spell from your hand or the top of your library without paying its mana cost. So it's just so good, and it's really good with our mutate as well. So um, just a very strong card. And then of course, like time walk. So that's kind of just our package there, and the opponent just has to you know choose their poison, you know. So we're gonna get two of these and. Um, if you're not familiar, this is the Emergent Ultimatum. This is, uh, these are from Ikoria, so it's like 2021. These are when these cards uh, came out about three years ago. And uh, so the Emergent Ultimatum um, kind of dominated standard. Uh, the ramp um, was basically based on uh, Cultivate. Um, yeah, there was a lot of Cultivate, Wolf Willow Haven, um, and like Elder Gargroth, just does some more juice. And basically, you just go into your Warren Collects Planeswalker suite, and you just kind of end the game, like um, you know, turn turn five consistently, probably, you know, once you cast your Emergent Ultimatum. I think Mystical Dispute was in there too, just to like kind of combat blue cards as like just a one mana, an easy one mana counter if anyone had a counter magic. So it's a very dominating play pattern, and I believe um, um, Scott Vargas, I think he did take the championship with this um, particular build of the Immersion Ultimatum, so um, GG there. So yeah, it's just very strong. Um, for two black, three green, two blue, it's a sorcery speed, you cast this, you get to look through, uh, as a resolve, you look through three cards in your library. Um, an opponent uh, chooses uh, two of those cards, um, the other one um, goes back into your library. Then you cast the other two without paying their mana costs. It's just super strong. So, um, so that's the package that we're kind of building from there. Now, um, we will play uh, a few tutors to kind of um, get us on our way. Um, we're going to play a mystical tutor and a, a grim tutor as well. So that's kind of um, kind of our our tutor package there. So that's how we're gonna kind of get to those cards. Um, dig up is kind of something to consider too, but I, I think Mystical Tutor is kind of just a little bit more efficient. Um, it's a little cheaper, and um, we can fetch other stuff too with a Mystical Tutor. So I like that. I think Mystical Tutor is a perfect addition. I just like Grim Tutor. I just have this in my collection, so I don't have to spend like 50 bucks on a Demonic Tutor and three mana cost. This it's fine. It's no big deal. Um, let's see now. Now for this deck, um, we really don't want to have uh, too many mana dorks um, because the thing with the mana dorks is that we really want to focus on our landfall triggers the most. So that's kind of going to be like our big, our big pull. 
So really, I think um, in the heart of it, it just really comes down to, um, I don't have the card yet, but uh, it basically comes down to um, our one mana uh, package as Exploration, Elvish Mystic, which is just a one mana uh, elf that can produce one upon tapping, and then the Bird of Paradise. So just something very simple like that. Um, so just those three, because we really want to uh, focus in on our landfall. That's kind of like the... The big, um, the big, the big enchilada. So, for instance, we're not going to be playing like any two mana dorks like Paradise Druid or Bloom Tender. Um, I mean, those are excellent choices, perhaps, um, but not in the particular build we're trying to go for. We're going for um, Landfall. Landfall is our big uh, kind of, um, you know, kind of what we're striving for here. So uh, to accomplish that, um, we're going to basically play a few of the payoffs here. Um, I do have three in my possession. I have the Nature's Lore here. I have the Rampant Growth, and I have the Secure Tribe Elder. We're also going to be playing um, three visits and into the north to round out that um, that 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 two mana uh, ramp. Um, you could opt for like a growth spiral, um, explore those type of cards, um, but we really just want to kind of um, get the land onto the battlefield, ensure that we're you know tutoring the land from our battlefield and putting it on. So that's that's what these these are all very similar. Some of the lands come in untapped. Um, some of the more expensive cards. Um, this nature lore's is just a good value. It's like two bucks now. Um, three visits is a little more. I think. Into the North is like $2, but um, the Nature's Lore and uh, Three Visits, um, you know, I think there's also another um, one that's pretty optimized too. So we'll look into that, but I'm pretty satisfied. I think I want to be like, you know, five, like about five of these. Um, could even consider six, like could even consider, I do, I do believe there is an additional... Um, Perhaps there might be other ones and other than three visits, there might be another kind of two mana um, landfall there. So that's definitely something to look into. We definitely want to be hot on those. So um, we'll, I'll look into that, but we have the Secure Tribe Elder. That's, that's not, that is a creature, but you can sack it for a land. So um, that is something that we're going to be looking into there. So it's about six of those. So we're really focusing on landfall here. Um, we're gonna be a little bit aggressive here, so we will play Haro, which is uh, an additional cost to play Haro, uh, sacrifice a land, and then search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them into play, yeah, so they're not even tapped. So yes, yeah, very strong landfall card if you have the right components out. And then Cultivate too. Yeah, they Cultivate, these are both foil from Roger, you can see they're so nice. Roger is at our card store and he has some very is he's so smart he kept his all his foils it's common uncommon so they just have these beautiful old foils here to bling out to blind everybody's eyes as he would say <laughs> yeah baby so um yeah there's the cultivate there's the haro so um we're definitely getting into our our ramp so um then we have like kind of our payoffs to go here um we have our um lotus cobra then we have our Tireless Provisioner. These uh, are just absolutely wild with all the lands that come in. They're just gonna just give us like infinite gas. Um, the Tireless Provisioner will create treasures for us. Um, whereas the Lotus Cobra and the Nissa, upon the lands entering the battlefield, they produce basically an extra mana source um, as that land comes in. And um, we do have uh, fish lands as well. So, um, yeah, it's kind of, it is pretty strong. Definitely is a strong kind of play pattern here. So very, very nice. Uh, let's continue. So um, we're gonna play a little, little, a couple cool cards here. Of course, we have um, some more landfall payoffs like a Scoot Swarm. That card can get out of hand um, when you start mutating onto it and um, bringing in an additional lands. Uh, Wood Elves, this is just a creature that brings down a land, has a nice enter the battlefield trigger. 
So when it comes onto the battlefield, it will uh, bring out an additional land as well. Oracle of Moldaya and Augur of Autumn, these are just going to be great with our exploration. Um, they're just going to let us uh, continue to play extra lands off the battlefield, so it's be nice. Oracle Moldaya just lets us play additional lands. So, yeah, it's just the landfall is just very getting very good. We just have some additional ramp or black market connection. I would say um, for black market, um, I'm not opposed to like a, you know, just creating a treasure and drawing a card to lose the three life every turn. Um, I, we don't really have a purpose too much in Commander to, to make a changeling. Um, I mean, we can't mutate onto a changeling because it is every creature type and it is a human. So really the black market is there just for ramp um, in form of treasures and to draw that additional card. We would love to draw cards in this deck. Then we have um, Uro here. This is just more um, kind of um, ramp. This is just an OG. He helps draw cards. Um, he helps us put into uh, lands on the battlefield. Um, gain his life and then we can exile him later and um this is just a cool card um it's gonna go well um with some of our um different different types of uh combos we have um i'm, I'm considering playing greater good in this deck um it would do well like a greater good would be well off of an an uro that you just casted you could sack it and just draw six pretty fast so that's something I'm considering. I don't know if, um, other than Brokos, like, if I have too many, like, enablers for that card, but, and I don't know if I really like it at four mana, but it's something, like, to kind of discover and kind of explore as the deck goes on. Um, this is Gwenna. She just is really good in this deck because we have some higher power creatures, and um, we can tap her and then, like, basically use that mana to mutate onto her, and then she'll untap, and it kind of just creates a loop where you're just mutating on and untapping, mutating on and untapping, so it's pretty good. Um, then we have some just cards that we're gonna just kinda test out to see how they do. Um, and I'm sure they're gonna do well because they do really well on Brawl. So for instance, the um, Invasion of Amelcat, this card um, mills cards from our opponent's uh, libraries and we draw a card ourselves. We mill some cards as well. And we, um, if we destroy it, then we can create, um, we can have this become a clone of any creature card in the graveyard. So that's that's pretty nice too. So we like the invasion a lot. I think it's just kind of a a very interesting card if your your opponents are playing some pretty pretty greedy creatures, you can get in with the invasion real quick and get ahead with a with a nasty creature on board. So very exciting the invasion just for three mana. It's such a cool card. Um, Binding of the Old Gods, this is just kind of a nice destroy effect at 4 mana and it just ramps us on stage 2, so we don't hate it, I think it's fine. Um, Solemn Simulacrum is great in this deck because um, we can mutate onto the Solemn and then there's also ways for us to um, kind of create token copies of this. Um, we will play um, a card called Sublime Epiphany which is nice with the Solemn, and then Vesuvian Duplomancy. So those are kind of our tech cards that kind of maybe, maybe you haven't seen too often um, that are kind of gonna take this deck over the top and give them, kind of give them some extra synergies there. Um, then we just have kind of our, our good stuff cards like um, Elder Gargaroth, you know, that's just a nice card to come down on five. I'm not, I'm not really going to be too sad about that card, especially if we can kind of get some tokens of that going too. That would be really nice. Um, Titan of Industry has a nice CTB. We have Coma here. Just some big, big, big green Simic cards. You know, some nice payoffs. We have the Great Henge here. Just a fantastic card. Here's the Vesuvian Diplomacy. So um, this particular card, um, when you cast a spell that targets only a single artifact or creature you control, create a token that's a copy of that artifact or creature except it's not legendary. So if we mutate onto um, any creature with this on the battlefield, it creates an, a token copy. Um, and it does, anything that's legendary, it will create another copy. So, um, and it, that's not legendary with all its abilities. So this card is just so good here. Um, and it's going to work with, with all our ETBs that we have, all those cool ETB cards that we have, like Titan of Industry, Psalms of Macklin, Wood Elves, all those cards that are just going to give us extra value. 
um, with the Vesuvian Diplomancy. This also works with our mutated creatures, so um, if any of those uh, mutated creatures have ETBs, then they get the ETB. So yeah, really good. So here's Greater Good. And um, we're definitely going to be going with this card and giving it a shot and see how it all performs in the deck. We do have some, we, we can definitely want to kind of outlast and definitely draw cards in this deck. So that's just kind of our, our draw card package. We have Greater Good, Rishkar's Expertise, and uh, Return of the Wild Speaker. So these cards function in a similar way. And you draw cards um, equal to the power of um, a particular creature you have on the battlefield. So very strong. Rishkar's is a sorcery, whereas Return is the is instant speed, and Rishkar will actually put a five drop onto the on the battlefield for free, which is nice. Here's Sublime Epiphany. This is just a really sweet card. Um, very excited about this. So yeah, Sublime Epiphany just working as like a counter, and then um, kind of just really working with, um, for instance, our IV, the spell thief here. So it's just going to kind of bring the digital mutates. If Ivy's on the battlefield, if the Zubin Diplomancy is on the battlefield, it's going to like kind of do that. And we, we create big creatures, like single card creatures. So making a token copy is good. That's kind of exactly where we want to be with this deck. So um, I do really like uh, the chariot in this deck too, especially if we're going to be making those tokens. So let me see here. My chariot. Yeah, I did some play testing tonight, and I think I think I have a pretty good vision for where this deck is going to be. So there's uh, the Esco's chariot, just a really good value card and ability that it can copy tokens. We can also mutate onto the cats too, which is nice. So just super solid. You can even mutate onto the Esco's chariot. I don't know if you all knew that, but if you if you mutate onto the Esco's chariot, um, you can actually mutate over it. And um, it won't be a vehicle, it'll no longer be the creature on top, but it will still retain all the abilities. So, um, kind of an interesting, interesting concept is to just have like your 4 4 chariot without having to have to crew it anymore. Kind of interesting, right? Um, in terms of counter magic, like I had like, um, like a two mana, just like something like this, like a delay or something, but I'm kind of like, um, I'm kind of like kind of lost interest into like these. The counter spells um, to for the most part. I think Sublime Epiphany is kind of nice, um, but we will play. We will play a few counter spells. Don't get me wrong, but I really just don't think that's kind of where we want to be um, with this particular deck. Um, what we want to have is definitely like um, lands that are counter spells, like Jawari Disruption, because those are like landfall. Like it's our landfall, and then like cards, for instance, I can offer like you can't refuse. This is fine. This is like a one mana blue counter non-target creature spell. Um, just like kind of like similar to Swan Song. We'll give our, our opponent some mana advantage, but um, it's easier on the wallet too. So we like all, an offer you can't refuse. It's just an uncommon from New Capenna. Boneyard Lurker, this card is going to work really well with our fetch lands. Um, we have a good amount of fetch lands, so this is never going to be like, when you mutate, you're never going to kind of be empty handed. You're going to be getting some sort of value with it. So we do like the Lurker. We love the Starrex. This card is a must kill. And definitely not, you must not let this mutate. Because if you do, like, we're just gonna be taking permanence off the top of our library and putting it on the battlefield and getting out of hand. Um, these are kind of our weaker mutate cards, but they have lower mutate costs. The Insatiable Hemophage um, just drains all our opponents. So that's good, um, not bad. And this is actually a good mutate. This is a three mana mutate. This brings um, brings lands out of our library every time you mutate. So it's good with our landfall. It's perfect. It's our, probably our number one um, reason why we're running mutate is because we can get these kind of landfall synergies with uh, the Great Horn, which is really cool. Um, C Dash Octopus, just a really nice low cost mutate. One in a blue. We love the low cost mutate. We want to get. In, we want to. Like be very mana efficient, playing like our four mana mutates on turn you know three or four, and then um, we want to be mutating onto them with these lower mutates like C Dasher and Parcel Beast that have a low mutate cost. These are fantastic. Um, Baby Godzilla, kind of um, like in terms of our mutate, we are running quite a few mutate cards, so we we're gonna we're gonna give Baby Godzilla a try, of course. 
Um, but we are we are playing a lot of um, you know two mana um, ramp spells that kind of like kind of are going and having a little kind of a friction with it. Um, so we'll give it a shot. Um, I, I mean, it is a mutate. It's like kind of a mutate, the de facto mutate card. Um, so, you know, it's so good and constructed, right? Because if you can run like a bunch of baby Godzillas and migratory great horns, you're just getting so far ahead. Um, whereas like this is a little more narrow for the baby Godzilla, you know? Um, but yeah, I still think it's, I still think it's going to be, um, you know, worth, worth trying out. Um, then the uh, Dreamtail Heron. Um, we do like the cards. I think we're gonna we'll keep it going. It has a kind of a kind of a, um, a decent um, mutate cost at four. Um, that's similar to the Sawdust Demolisher. Um, the Demolisher is great because it hits um, non-land permanents, so that's nice. Um, the Dreamtail Heron will draw us cards, and this is a six-six too, so that's also very good. I love the Pouncing Sword Shark because the for four mana. Mutate, um, you can start bouncing things, and this mind leecher is just fantastic. Um, this will, this particular one will let us um, exile cards from our opponent's library, on top of their libraries when it mutates, and um, it, we can play their lands too. So that's really nice, really good with our landfall. Just keeps our landfall going. It's just a perfect landfall card, um, and just in terms of value, great too. Um, this is the uh, Chittering Harvester. So whenever this creature mutates, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Um, not the worst mutate, just five, you know, so when it mutates, like, you can, it, the opponents have to sacrifice a creature, it's fantastic. And then Gem Razor, I love Gem Razor, this is the three mana mutate. So, yeah, that's kind of like where we're rolling right now with Brokos. Um, we do have some interaction, um, for instance, this is kind of some of the interaction we have. Blood in the Snow, Extinction Event, Soul Shatter. And then um, we have some some additional. Um, this is basically just all our lands here. So we have like our Tingle Floor. These are see, these are just really great lands. They're multi-face cards. So like uh, Tingle Floor Hedron, uh, Glass Pool Mimic. Also a Shapeshifter, fantastic card for us. Malachar Rebirth. Um, Malachar Rebirth, I love that card. Fable Passage. Then we have all our fetch hands here. The Burning Catacombs, Misty. Polluted Delta, um, then we're going to have like our kind of our just like our our duels, um, you know, Rhinewood Forest, Command Tower, some snow covered for, um, swamps, um, islands, forests, yeah, it's pretty much coming together pretty nicely. Then we're just going to play like the suite, the pathway suite, um, you know, I don't have all the shock lands like this, of course, I want that to be, um, God, I'm blinking now, but uh, it's just because I don't have the card, but it's the Simic um, Shock. So I have the other two shocks, the Overgrown, or the Watery Grave and the Overgrown Tomb. It's got some weird Simic name, you know, Simic is just weird, right? So, um, yeah, we got some of our um, Man Lands, Zago Triome, Lair of the Hydra, and then we have some of our Pain Lands here. Um, I'm going to, and then we have our multi-phase cards here as well. Um, we do have a channel land. We still need to pick up um, an Ottawara and Boseju. So um, that's going to kind of be the last kind of... Um, I am looking for some cards like in the um, Collectors of the Lord of the Rings. I did get a box for my birthday, a Collector's Box. So a Reflecting Pool would be really cool to pick up in there. Um, that would be nice to kind of slot in as just like another duel. Um, yeah, that would be really nice. Um, but yeah, I... I in terms of budget, like, I think this is kind of, even the channel lens, like, they're great, and, you know, but maybe just over time I get to them, you know, it's not like I have to have all the cards right now, so, um, yeah, that's kind of where it is, this is a landfall deck, um, for the, uh, Salt Lake Colors, and, um, really what I'm kind of learning about landfall, and if I want to just kind of save you some time, and, um, if you do pursue, like, um, I think there's a couple of different ways you can go about it, and there's definitely some good landfall cards for mutate. So I think landfall is the way to go. Um, I think a couple mana dorks in exploration are good, like the one mana dorks, um, maybe like two of them is fine, like a Birds of Paradise, a Arbor Elf, just the Elvish Mystic is fine, right? And then, um, then you're going to have your ramp suite, you know, your five or six 
uh, cards that kind of give you that additional ramp. Um, you know, two, three mana ramp cards, I think is kind of sufficient. Um, I think it's going to kind of get you where you want to go. Definitely uh, for the Sult I made them, um, I think that a time walk of some sort is necessary if you're playing like an emergent ultimatum, whether it's time warp or all runs of 50. I think time warp is the better option. Um, and then, of course, you can have your, um, you know, your big disgusting creature cards that you can like, for, for whatever reason, perhaps maybe you draw your um, Breach the Multiverse or one with the Multiverse. At least you can have like your time warp, time warp, coma, um, etc. You know, time walk, coma, and perhaps you still have one with a multiverse in your library and you have those as your three. So your opponent is still left in a bad spot. I think that's kind of um, kind of where you want to be, you know, in this particular deck. So yeah, that's about uh, that's that's about it with the the salt I made them. And um, yeah, I hope you have a a good um, experience with this and, um, you know, whatever you choose, you know, going forward with your decks, um, you know, hope you have a good day. Bye.